God, I love the Ninja Turtles. Comic book movies come in all different shapes and sizes. Sure, when we think of comic book movies, much like we think of actual comic books, we tend to only think of Marvel and DC. But there exist a whole host of films based on other characters and titles from all across the medium. Of course, if you watch this show, then you already know about all the great comic book movies based on non-Marvel or DC properties. Great films like Scott Pilgrim, The Crow, Sin City, and some not so great ones like From Hell, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, all the Crow sequels. But one film that I feel tends to get overlooked when we talk about great comic book movies is the original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie directed by Steve Barron. I think people tend to forget that this is actually a comic book movie because, and especially at the time, it was very closely associated with a very popular Saturday morning cartoon more so than it was with a weird underground comic book that it's actually based on. But despite first appearances, this movie is actually one of the most faithful adaptations of any comic book I have ever seen. And even to this day, it's one of the best representations of the Ninja Turtles across any platform. And today, in honor of the film's 30th anniversary this week, we're gonna talk about it. I feel like if there was ever a time to wear this shirt, it's today. Back in 1990, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was one of the biggest television programs in the country. It captured the hearts and minds of kids everywhere with its unique premise and very interesting cast of characters. And beyond the TV show, the Ninja Turtles were an action figure juggernaut. Every kid on the block pretty much had their own personalized collection of toys. No two collection was ever the same. And they were stars of the video game world as well. The 1989 arcade game by Konami is still considered to be one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. And the NES game released around the same era isn't all that good, but it was one of the best-selling games on the platform, despite it being very buggy and way too difficult for anybody to actually beat. Music was banging though. And of course, there were just a slew of imitators. Some good, some bad, some street sharks, but nothing ever compared to the original. Of course, something as popular and as awesome as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would attract the eye of Hollywood and eventually a live action movie would manifest itself, right? Well, not exactly. Despite being a very hot property in the late 80s and early 90s, Every major Hollywood studio passed on the idea of making a live action movie of the Turtles. Seriously, when filmmakers began shopping this movie around, every single studio passed on it. It wasn't until Golden Harvest, who had previously been known for making lower budget kung fu films, decided to sign on and the movie actually started getting made. Eventually, New Line Cinemas would come on to further finance the film and handle distribution to theaters. Now, to be fair, you can sort of see why a movie studio would want to pass on an idea like this. It's very easy for something like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to be made for very cheap and turn out very poorly, eventually failing its way into oblivion like Masters of the Universe and a lot of other movies based on Saturday morning cartoons. And to be fair, if you do watch the movie now in 2020, it does look like a cheap movie. All the sets are very small and claustrophobic, clearly sets. The lighting is very dark. Sometimes you can hardly see anything. Some of the stunts are pretty amateurish and despite how impressive the Jim Henson suits actually are, they're clearly falling apart in some scenes. And yet, somehow, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles wound up being a box office hit and has endured to this day as a classic of the genre. People remember this movie incredibly fondly. I mean, why else would a company like NECA want to put out high quality action figures of this film in the 21st century? Action figures that I very much want, but can never find in stores for a reasonable price for some reason. And let's not beat around the bush here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of the best comic book films ever made, period. It's unique, it's well acted, it's very faithful to the source material, it's fun, it's iconic, and it presents the turtles in a definitive state. It is the definitive depiction 
of these characters. And yet it did this despite not exactly being a faithful adaptation of the Saturday morning cartoon that was popular at the time. Instead, it was more of a direct adaptation of the original Mirage comic books made by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. And I do mean in many cases, the movie does copy the comic books beat for beat. A lot of scenes from the film are lifted directly from the original Mirage comics. The way Casey Jones meets Raphael, for example, is very similar to the way the two characters meet in the comics. The whole middle section where Raph gets beaten up, April's apartment gets burned down, the turtles have to hide on a farm before eventually returning to New York, that whole middle section is lifted directly from a storyline of the original Mirage comics. Just swap out Leonardo from the comics and replace him with Raphael for the movie. As a kid, I always wondered why the cartoon had robot foot soldiers while the movie had just street teenagers being foot soldiers. And eventually I learned because in the original comics, the foot soldiers were human. The robots were created for the TV show. Of course, that's not to say that the movie only took inspiration from the comics, it did pull some influence from the TV show as well. The turtles all wear different color bandanas in the movie like they do on the cartoon. They love pizza and some of them are even surfer dudes like they are in the cartoon. April O'Neil's job is a reporter in the movie just like it is in the cartoon. In the comics, she's a lab assistant. It's this blend of the dramatic, serious comic books and the more fun, cartoony, cartoon that makes the movie so beloved no matter which version of the turtles you prefer. It was director Steve Barron's idea to mesh these two worlds together and he does it with such precision and ease that you wonder why other directors who have handled the Ninja Turtles in future projects never really could do it as well as he could. I mean, this movie goes from a scene where Raphael gets beaten within an inch of his life on the verge of death then immediately going to Michelangelo getting into a nunchuck duel complete with silly sound effects. And yet, the two tones never feel dramatically disconnected from one another. It all just flows seamlessly and fits within this world. But perhaps more than anything, what makes this movie so memorable, at least for me, is the addition of the theme of family and brotherhood to the greater Turtles mythology. This really was the first time we saw the idea that the Turtles and Splinter were a family. Sure, the comics and the cartoon touched upon it a little bit, but here, it's the driving force of the entire plot. The movie is really about four brothers who learn the hard way that they need each other to survive in this world. And they learn the hard way that they're not ready to grow up just yet without their mentor, sensei, and father by their side. And this message extends to the idea of the family one chooses as well. April O'Neil and Casey Jones are accepted into the Turtles family with open arms. Even punk ass Danny learns that the family you choose should not be one filled with murderous ninjas. The scene where Casey Jones scolds future Academy Award winner Sam Rockwell for thinking of the Foot Clan as a family is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. It just hits like a sledgehammer every time I watch it. We're a family. Family? You, you, is that what you said, family? You, you, you call this here and that down there family? God, just everything about this movie works so well. Even its flaws work in favor of the movie. Yes, the whole thing is very dimly lit, but it creates this very unique atmosphere to the film. It doesn't make the film look like a cartoon. It's funny, sure, but it shows that the filmmakers are taking this source material, taking this property seriously. They wanna make a serious film out of this ridiculous concept. And yes, the turtle costumes are falling apart in a couple of scenes, but you know what? They still look incredible. You believe that a six foot tall turtle is standing there talking to actual human beings. The work Jim Henson and his crew did on this film really is nothing short of amazing. It really does say something about the craftsmanship of Jim Henson and his creature shop that of the five live action Ninja Turtle films that there have been, the turtles only looked even remotely good in the two that Jim Henson's creature shop actually worked on. All the rest really do look like crap. Even the two featuring state-of-the-art CGI. God, I haven't even gotten into how much the music slaps in this movie, complementing the dramatic elements with the more comedic fun scenes perfectly, 
haven't even gotten into how all of the actors are giving 100% to a movie that they could have easily have given 25% to. Judith Hogue and Elias Cotius have gone on to star in other more dramatic, serious things, and their acting is just as good in Ninja Turtles as it is in future projects. And for my money, the voice actors of the Ninja Turtles, Splinter and Shredder, are the definitive voices for these characters. Sure, we all loved Uncle Phil on the animated series, and he's good, but hearing David McCarran's menacing performance really is something else. And he delivers the second best I am your father in movie history. I am your father. It's a movie clearly made with a lot of love and care and attention to detail. It's a shame that future movies in this series don't really match the same passion that this first film had. The sequel, 1991 Secret of the Ooze, is technically a better made film. It's got better costumes, better sets, better lighting. You can see everything in the film this time, but it leans too far towards the cartoonish aspect of the turtles in all the wrong ways. And the third film, despite having a great concept, often felt much cheaper and shallower than the original film did. I don't hate Turtles 2 or Turtles 3. I kind of like them in a lot of ways, but they're just not the first movie, not by a long shot. And of course, the less said about the two Michael Bay produced films, the better, especially the first movie. The first movie was made clearly by people who had no idea what the Ninja Turtles were all about. And the second film looked like it was made by people who were trying to overcompensate for that fact. The 2007 animated film though is actually pretty good. I recommend watching that if you missed that. Overall, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a classic movie, an undisputed gem of a film within the comic book genre, or really any movie genre. It deserves to be talked about in the same breath as other classic comic book films like Spider-Man 2, Richard Donner's Superman, and The Dark Knight. It's not perfect, I would hesitate to even call it a masterpiece, but it is hands down one of the best comic book films ever made, and not just for Ninja Turtle fans either. Fans of just good action movies with likable characters will enjoy something about this film. Hell, they would just enjoy the whole thing. It's just, it's that good of a movie. Cowabunga indeed. Of course, what are your thoughts on the original Ninja Turtles movie? Do you remember it fondly? What are some of your favorite moments from the film? Or do you think I'm just being a hyperbolic lunatic? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. It's honestly not just nostalgia talking. I honestly believe that the original Ninja Turtles film is one of the best comic book movies ever made. Do I dare say it's better than all of the MCU films? Yes. Yes, I do dare. Incidentally, this is another movie, much like Batman 89, that I can recite from memory verbatim, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just too tired to go through with that. Are you crazy? Yeah, Leo, I'm crazy, okay? I'm loony. Why? 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 Oh, I don't know. I thought about redecorating, you know, a couple of throw pillows, a TV news reporter. What do you think? I need help. The movie is currently streaming on Netflix at the time of this recording, along with Secret of the Ooze and the 07 animated film, not the third film for some reason. So you do have easy access to go watch it if you wanna watch it again or watch it for the first time. If you wanna actually own the film on Blu-ray, there's an Amazon affiliate link in the description below to the film by itself and the original trilogy, because why not own them all? Still waiting for a 4K re-release of the movie though, I would, Buy that in a heartbeat. I do own the 25th anniversary collector set. It includes the original trilogy and the 07 animated film. Uh, they don't make this anymore, and that's a shame because this probably is the best version to get of the classic series. It even comes with an awesome beanie that I wear sometimes. And of course, don't forget that we have new videos on this channel every single Tuesday and Wednesday with Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern being Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that like this video and share with a friend, a friend who does not enjoy penicillin on their pizza. And if they don't get that reference, they're not your friend anymore. And if you don't get that reference, go watch Ninja Turtles right now and fix that problem. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Wash your hands.